be in a spirit of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to come into your house, into your sanctuary. Father, as Ray said earlier, we, we want to not only invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to be with us, we want to invite the presence of the Holy Spirit to be in us, to be our teacher and our God. May we hear your voice, Father. May we do things in, in, all in accordance to your will. May you speak for me today, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, there's some things that just excite me. And maybe you won't get as excited as I get when, uh, uh, in, in, in certain things. And there's certain things that, that excite you that probably, maybe, maybe they wouldn't excite me, but probably not. I get excited very easily. <laughs> Um, how big is the universe? That includes the, all the galaxies. I mean, and, and this is from secular scientists. Maybe some of them are uh, Adventist Christians. Maybe some of them are Christians. But uh, anybody care to take a guess how big, how wide the, the vast universe is? It's, uh, say what? Mm -hmm. I like that answer because I, I, I years ago I started looking into this, and when I first started looking into it, I think they said there were a hundred billion, hundred billion galaxies. Then it, a couple years later, it went to two hundred billion. A couple years later, it doubled, and now it, it's at uh, they think it's roughly two trillion galaxies. It's like okay, <laughs> you know we can't out outdo God. And we can't outthink God. This is the infinite trying to figure out, but the, the, the finite trying to figure out the infinite. Uh, the scientists who, who uh, pinned this down said that our universe is 93 billion light years across. I can't even comprehend 93 billion. Now, one light year, get this, one light year, I don't know how they figured this part out, but I guess you could buy mathematics as uh, Brother uh, Richard, yeah, the speed of light. The speed of light is 286,000, wait, excuse me, 186,282 miles per second, wait. Light travels at 186,282 miles per second. And that, they've pretty much got that down packed. But you think about how fast that is. And you think about a light year. A light year is six trillion miles, and our our uh, universe is 93 billion light years across. I mean, th these are numbers that you know I can just say, okay, it's a long way. I mean, real. The width of the Milky Way. Now we live in a. This is we live in the Milky Way. It's a spiral uh, galaxy, and in our Milky Way, we have uh, between 100 and 400 billion stars. That's a big era of margin there, 100 and 400 billion stars. <laughs> That's in one galaxy. And if there are nine, if there are two trillion galaxies, and if we're an average universe, you think about how big this creation God has made. Wow. Our creation is so vast that we can't even think about it. Now, we've, we've already said that light travels at 100, I just say 186,000 miles per second. That's easy for me to remember. When I say 282 per second, that's like, it's really getting right down to it. And uh, you see, the Milky Way, I said, was, a, was a, an average size spiral galaxy. And this galaxy is moving through space. And this number is astronomical also. I'm just going to say it's a little over a million miles per hour. That's how fast this galaxy is through, through space. The galaxy. Now, the sun is moving through the galaxy, and the sun is orbiting the center of the Milky Way at 450,000 miles per hour. So you got the galaxy moving at a million, you've got the sun moving at 450,000 miles per hour around the center point of the, of the Milky Way. <clears throat> the, our, our, that's our sun, and, and of course our uh, solar system moves with the sun. So our solar system is moving at 450,000 miles around that center point. Now the Earth, how fast does the Earth move around the sun? 66,000. Yeah. He's pretty close. I got 67,000, so we must be reading the same author. 
The sun is moving at 67,000. What I'm getting at here is, is the, uh, the, the finite us trying to figure out the infinite God. There, there's just no way. Okay, now the earth is 24,000 to 25,000 miles in circumference. Our earth spins, and we can go out and watch the clock, and tomorrow, tomorrow this time we'll be back in the same spot almost. So a 24-hour day, and we're moving, say, 24,000 miles in a 24-hour day. How fast is that? A thousand miles per hour. Now, if you put all this stuff together, it will blow your mind that we are moving through the galaxy every which way you can think of. I just thought about this last week. I thought about galaxies and all this stuff before, but oh, I just thought about this last week. And I, I told Judy, I said, Judy, I said, I gotta, we got to buy a globe. i got to show everybody what's going on. <laughs> so I was just going to get a softball and say, okay, this, is, this represents our planet. But I thought, well, you know, I want to get a globe. So we went to uh, a place this week and we got a globe. And this is the globe we came up with. Not, this is the closest one I could get that I liked. I mean, you can pay a lot of money for these things. I, I saw one online that was $6,000. So, well, I want that one. But the thing about it is it's 40 inches on the house. I'd have to leave it out in the yard. It wouldn't, the it wouldn't fit through the door. But this represents my, my uh, illustration really good enough. And you can imagine, we're, you know, the, the Earth, it looks like it's moving real slow, especially when the guys are out in space. And you don't realize how fast we're moving. <coughs> now, how in the world does this thing move in every which way direction you can think of, and the water does not, you know, like slip up here in the middle of China? <laughs> how do you get that water to stay? I mean, man cannot, I, I can take a cap full, of, I was going to do that, but I'm not going to make it. So it's like a cap full of water and, and put it right there and see if it's, what's it going to do? It's going to run off. God keeps everything in balance, in check. Amen. And how our God is, is way past my thinking. I don't know about your thinking, but my thinking, God is way above that. Yes. I can't imagine. This, this thing is moving so fast. If you got in the way, you'd, be, you'd have a problem. If God, how did God stop? In the Old Testament, God stopped. And he, in the Old Testament, God stopped the planet and made it go backwards. How could He do that? Because He's God. Because He's God. <laughs> the evolution cannot. Evolution does not work. If you believe in evolution, I just I just shot you in the foot. You know, it, there is no way that evolution could come up with a big bang and, and, and have this happen. It has to have a, got more, but it wasn't a foot shot, it was two inches of Intelligent bottom. design. <laughs> intelligent design. It has to be intelligent design. There is no way that this planet could be made accidentally Amen. and fly through space like it's flying through the galaxy. There is just no way. There has to be intelligent design. There has to be a creator. Yeah. I think I think that is just that I'm, I'm blown away by my illustration. It's my illustration, but I, I, when, I, when I came up with it, I was sitting there going, I was just, my mouth's flopped open and I'm going, I'm looking around, you know, see if, you know, you, you think, you know, something's got to be shaking here, you know, there might, there might be something shaking around. But do you, do y'all feel any shaking or anything? We're smooth. Yeah, no earthquakes right now. No, right now, but our God has invited us into His domain. And we are in another dimension. There are angels around us now that are, that are here with us. We, we, I've asked God to keep the evil out for today, and I believe He has. The, the, but there's another dimension that we can't see. And God... He's in, that, he's in this dimension and that dimension. So are the angels. When we sing, when we have Jesus with you, wherever you go, if you leave Jesus at the door, the angels won't go with you either. But if you have Jesus in your life, wherever you go, your angels are with you, protecting you. Angels are excelling strength. Hallelujah. We should not fear anything. Yeah. 
We should not fear anything. There's one th there's one verse in scripture that, that I, I didn't think about until right now. That uh, it's a list of people that will not be in heaven, and the very first one is the fearful. Some versions it says the cowardly. When we die, we're going to live forever. When we die, the next second we'll, we'll see Jesus coming in the clouds of glory. Even if we're in the ground for another 200 years, we're going to see Jesus in the next second. That's what it's going to seem like to us. We'll be coming in the clouds of glory. I can't, I, I'm sure he's, he's going to come like this. Welcome, my children. He's going to be welcoming, man. Welcome. Welcoming us. <clears throat> that was a good icebreaker, wasn't it? <laughs> Anyway, most speakers won't say that. They just go right on that. You know, anyway. Lessons on Faith is a book that I have listened to. I cut, when I cut the grass, i got earphones in my ear. When I'm traveling, i got earphones in my ear. When I'm working, unless I'm having to pay attention, i got earphones in my ear. And I'm listening to a sermon, and, and one of the books I listen to quite frequently is Lessons on Faith. And let's go to the scriptures. Let's go to, uh, I want to start with Exodus chapter 20. We're going to, we're going to <clears throat> this is the, <coughs> excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. This is the, uh, Exodus chapter 20 is, if you know, the, no, this is the Ten Commandments. And I love this because we used to have a pastor that he argued the point with me. And it was an argument. I, I don't like to say that we argue, but we do sometimes. <laughs> but it was a nice argument. We, you know, what, we weren't choking each other. That's something Raymond would say. We weren't choking each other. <laughs> Put him in a headlock. That, that was Raymond's. How, how Raymond was. Where's Buffy? Oh, okay. Now in Exodus chapter 20, in verse 11, it says, and I'm setting you up, if you, if you want to know, I'm setting you up. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and he rested the seventh day. On this, in six days, the Lord made heaven and this, this planet we stand on. In six days. Go to uh, Genesis chapter 1. And this is really not part of the sermon, but this is uh, information that, that I think that every Adventist or everybody who reads the Bible should, should, should look at that. In uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 11, it says, that in six days God made heaven and earth. If you read uh, verse 1 of chapter 1 of Genesis, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Boom. There's no discussion there. God created the heavens and the earth. Then we move on. The earth was without form and void. So was, that, was the earth here millions of years without form and void? No, you go back to verse 1. It says God made the heavens and the earth. In the earth. Amen. He Amen. says, And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. Now our 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 text, our Bible text for today. And I love this verse because it says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth, for he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. So when God spoke the word, you know, I, uh, I got a book. Yeah, I, I better not read because I'll, I'll run out of time. Um, evolution says that, and I get this comes from lessons on faith, and I'm paraphrasing rather than reading it. Evolution says that it takes long periods of time 
The Bible says God spoke and it was done. Hallelujah. Now, is there any time between God saying, let there be light, and then the light is there? No. no. There's no time. He speaks it. If you believe that it took time for when God said, uh, let there be light, <coughs> if it, and, it, he, all, and he, he said, uh, also he says, uh, and God said, let there be a firmament. If there's any time between let there be a firmament and the firmament, if there's any time, if you believe there's any time between there, then you're an evolutionist. That's right. When God speaks, it happens. Yeah. It says, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Yeah. You know, and, and just another side note, real quick. I, and I love that when I, when I think of that, I always think of David, when he said, create in me a clean heart. Ah. Think of that. You put those two things together. God can create in you a clean heart with the snap of a finger. And your heart is clean. I mean, before you hear, this, hear the noise coming through your ear, that's how fast it, it went. You, you, David was sincere when he asked for the clean heart. Be sincere when you talk to God. He will give you what you ask for. Amen. Oh, I hate when I just lose my train of thought. <laughs> evolution takes a uh, seat. The genuine evolutionist recognizes that creation must be immediate. But he does not believe in immediate action and therefore does not believe in creation. If you're, crea if you're a... If you're a uh, I mean... Uh, Jones and Wagner, they get pretty bold when they say that, and they meant it. They said, if you don't believe, if, you, if, you're, if you're an evolutionist, you're an infidel. You don't believe in the scriptures if you're an evolutionist. And I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not calling you infidels if you don't believe in, in, in evolution. I'm just telling you what Wagner and Jones says. And I want to talk about them just a little bit more before we, before we get out of here today. Oh, they gave me plenty of time to talk. I usually, my sermons are usually fast and I'm out of here. So. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I love you, Dennis. I really, I'm, I'm glad you made it back safely. I'm glad you made it. And, and, and we, we actually, we prayed that you were coming to come back safely. Appreciate it. Thanks, Lord. Now, creation is immediate or it's not creation. Hallelujah. If it's not immediate, it's evolution. The word spoken has the creative energy to produce the thing that, that the word pronounces. The word of God is a living thing. Yes. It's everlasting. It's, it's, when God speaks it, that, that, does the power ever go out of the word that he speaks? Yeah. No. No. It's an incredible thought to think about. And, and this, this, this is proof. If God did not bring things into us, this was a big bang, we would have uh, galaxies colliding into each other constantly if it was just an accident. This is, this is no accident. Amen. That was, a, that was almost an accident. Did y'all feel that too? <laughs> <laughs> in Exodus 19 and, and I love these, this, these two verses because they, 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 they mean so much to me Exodus chapter 19 verse 5 and 6. you don't have to turn there unless you just want to because I'm, 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 I'm going to read it and I'm going to uh, amen I'm going to uh, read two versions. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, comment on them. It says, Now therefore, this is verse 5 of Exodus chapter 19. And God's speaking to Israel. Actually speaking to Israel through Moses right now. He said, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. 
And he says, These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Now, let's go back to uh, verse 5. It says, now, for, now, therefore, if you will obey, in my Bible, I've got obey circled. It says, If you will listen attentively. And the New English translation kind of backs it up. And it, and it starts out, And now, if you will digit if you will diligently listen to me and keep my covenant, you will be my special possession out of all the nations. Now, he, he ought, I want to also add that he says, if you will obey. People don't like that word obey. I mean, it's kind of like obey me or else. But it's not the way God is. God is not obey me or else. God is obey me or you will suffer the consequences. Not because... I'm going to kill you, or I'm going to hurt you, but when you don't obey me, you separate yourself from me. That's right. And we've got to remember, God gave us this lesson book to teach us. Yeah. He also gave us something else. We're going to talk about that later. Please don't let me forget. He gave us this lesson book to teach us. And one of my favorite stories is Elijah. And Elijah... has been picked to go to, to King Ahab, who was married to Jezebel, who's one of the meanest ladies in all of Scripture. I, I hate to say that, but she was, she was kind of mean. And because she was killing the prophets of God, because she blamed prophets for her problems. But the way, the way if, if, Jezebel, if Jezebel would have stopped and thought for just a second, if her God was so powerful, he could have just wiped Ahab right off, not Ahab, Elijah right off the face of the planet. I mean, he could have just got, if he got rid of him just like that. But her God was, was a false God, and she just couldn't see that. I, I, when I talk about her, I'm talking about us. I'm talking about human beings. She was a human being. In Jeremiah 17, 9, it says, The heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's every one of us without Christ. Amen. Bar none, myself included. We are desperately wicked without Christ. Yes. Even sinless beings were desperately wicked without Christ. That is a hard thing to think about. You look back on, we always talk about how sinless Adam and sinless Eve were, you know, they were so good. Well, sinless Adam and sinless Eve, hey, they, they, they still disobeyed God. Mm. I've I got to stop doing that. I'm losing my train of thought when I get off on these tangents. But it's true. Adam and Eve disobeyed God and they were sinless creatures. Now, Ahab was chuck Elijah was chosen to go tell Ahab, uh, there's, there's a problem, Ahab. Your sin has reached the heaven. And uh, your judgment is you're not going to get any rain for a while. And and the spirit of prophecy says that that uh, before Ahab could I'm sure Ahab's sitting on his throne. I can't get away from this. But he's sitting on his throne, and Ahab, and Elijah comes in and says, Hey, Ahab, it's, it's not going to rain for three and a half years. He doesn't say three and a half years. He just said it's not going to rain for a while. And Ahab, before he can correlate in his mind, that, that well, the first thing that Elijah did was he's got on the, uh, the, uh, the garb of a prophet. And these, they're not too, they weren't too pretty back then. If you look at the garb of the prophets, you know, the, the things they wore, they, they, they were not too pretty. And, 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 and Ahab, excuse me, Elijah walks in to the palace, walks into the middle of the palace, walks past the guards, nobody sees him. Walks right up to the throne. And Ahab, and, and, he, and he says, <clears throat> and, and Elijah does not apologize. He's here. He's on a mission. He's there to give Ahab uh, information. <laughs> and, uh, and before Ahab can say anything, Elijah leaves and he, and he goes. And he goes to the brook Kidron, I believe. And he stays there for a couple of years. And the ravens feed him. But they're searching for Ahab. I, I'm sorry. I keep getting Ahab and Elijah mixed up. They're searching for Elijah. And they can't find him. I mean, they got the countries around looking for Elijah. They can't find him anywhere. 
and because they think if they find Elijah and kill him, that the that Baal will honor them because they killed the prophet Elijah, which is crazy. Why don't if Baal is a real God, why don't he just go and kill Elijah himself? It, it makes no sense. Well, Elijah, the prophet Elijah, the 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 uh, stream start to die, and where he is, that stream dies. And so God tells him to go and live with a widow woman in another country. And, he, and, and maybe most of y'all know the story where Elijah went and lived with that widow woman. She was fixing to make her last loaf of bread out of the oil and the flour that she had. And, uh, and he, said, he says, can you get me a drink of water? And the lady says, sure. And he says, while you're at it, make me a, make me a, a cake and bring it to me to eat. And she says, oh, uh, you know, I was going to fix that for my son and I. We were going to eat it and then we were going to wait around and die. And he says, no. He says, fix it for me. He says, and when you're done, fix yourself one and your son one. And he says that the flour and, and your oil will, will not run out until we have rain again. So, of course, they live. And, and the other story is in there where life, the lady's son dies. The, widow, the widow's son dies and uh, God uses uh, Elijah to bring the widow's son back to life. And anyway, I, I, I'm cutting, I'm cutting a lot of it out. There's a lot of information there. Uh, if you go read Prophets and Kings, it, it, it's, it's a beautiful story. But anyway, uh, after three and a half years, well, after two years, the Israelites were losing their children. They were dying. Because you get if you quit raining on the United States for three and a half years. Can you imagine what would take place? The rivers would dry up. We would, we would, we, we would barely be surviving. Our food wouldn't, wouldn't last. You know, that uh, saying that, that, this, that the cross of Christ is stamped on every loaf of bread, it, it's true. God feeds us every day and we just don't realize it. Amen. Now, Elijah gets the... Uh, the message from God to go tell Ahab, okay, it's going to rain. He says, but before that, he tells him, I want you, he goes to a light to Ahab and he says, I want to meet you on Mount Carmel. Bring your, all your uh, prophets of Baal and the uh, prophets of the other prophets, I can't remember the name of, Astra. Excuse me? Astra. So they, you got 850 prophets on Mount Carmel, and uh, Elijah said, if Baal be God, then serve Baal, and if God be God, then serve him. And what Elijah proposed was that they, they build an altar, and they take, a, 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 each one of them has a bull, and they put a bull on the altar, and whoever rains fire, if Baal rains fire, then, then Baal's God. If God rains fire, then God is God. And I hope I'm not losing that one here. But anyway. So the, uh, Elijah, the prophet Elijah allows the uh, prophets of Baal to go first. And, and they're trying to uh, get, and in, 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 in the story it talks about Satan. He's watching the whole thing. And if he could get that to ignite, then uh, Elijah says that the crowd would tear him, to, tear him to bits, tear him to pieces. And they would have, because the children of Israel were so convinced that Baal was God. Even after their children were dying after two years, they still believed that Baal was God. And that it was all Elijah's fault that they were starving and they didn't have any water. Well, um, Elijah says, okay, uh, you're first. So the prophets of Baal, they go first. <clears throat> and they're dancing around their sacrifice, and they're, they're, and they're trying to call Baal down to, to, uh, to, to rain fire down on the sacrifice. And it went all the way to, to evening time, and, they, and Elijah was making fun of him. He says, well, maybe your God's asleep. Or maybe he's on a visit, you know, maybe you should.